Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to preview for you Orchard, a nine card solitaire game. It is designed by Mark Tuck, and while it's had a very successful life previously as a print and play, it is now gonna be coming to print through side room games. Orchard is a very short, so five to 10 minute game about arranging your trees in your orchard in a way that's going to help you score points by producing the most fruit. So let's get down to how it plays. So true to its size and time limit, setup for this game is super easy. There are actually 18 cards in the game now, but you only play nine per game. You set aside your dice, your two rotten fruit cubes, which we'll explain, and then you take nine cards from the deck and you're ready to go. Also, as the rules helpfully state, you can take the other nine cards and put them off to the side so you can immediately play again when you're done, which they totally got my number on this. Yeah, I did that. I, I did that every time I played this game. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our deck off to the side here and we are gonna put one card down as our initial card. So we'll move these off to the side. So now we have, this is our beginner card, and then we're gonna draw two more off of the deck, and then this is our hand. So at all times, you're gonna have two cards to work with, and you'll be choosing where to put them in your orchard. So our goal now is to place all the cards out eventually, but we're going to be placing for maximum overlap. So for example, I might want to play here so I can overlap a red and a yellow, or I might wanna play here and overlap two of the blues, um, because basically what we're doing is every time you overlap, you get to put a die down on the overlap trees. And then if you can overlap again, you get to increase the value on the die that you placed. So even though these are six sided dice, it's really just one, three, and six. But if I put, let's say that I decide to put this card here, I get to put out two blue dice. Well, these are purple. Let's say one on them. And if I can pull off more overlaps, then they upgrade as we go. So every time you play a card, you draw a card, and then you just work through the deck that way. The idea is for the fruit to overlap. So for example, now I'm dealing with this hand. Let's say that I wanted to do something like, see how this, this, and this will overlap? So I can place this here. That means that this die is gonna become a three, and then here I'm gonna get a one and a one, because I've caused these trees to start to produce fruit. So they're, the idea, of course, and then you draw another card. So the idea, of course, is to make sure that the trees are constantly overlapping so that they bear more and more fruit. However, you might have noticed or guessed that it's not always that easy to make it happen. And that's what the rotten fruit is for. So twice per game, you're allowed to place a card that doesn't quite overlap and take a little bit of a penalty for that in order to make a card work. So if I just really wanted if for some reason I really felt it was important to play this card this way and then put a blue over a yellow, I could put a rotten fruit here so it won't produce me any points. And in fact, it'll lose me three at the end of the game. I can still choose to do that just to, um, just to kind of make bigger scoring work for me. So if I feel like I'm going to get more net points, even if I lose a three, it might be worth it. The other thing that's important for the rules of the game is that you can place the cards any way you want. So I can just rotate them around. I can put it at 90 degrees. I can rotate it 180 degrees, however I want to do it. As long as I'm overlapping a tree with the same kind of fruit when I, when I place the card. So now let's just keep playing. I'm seeing a really great play now because check it out. Yellow, red, blue, blue, yellow, red. So I can actually slip this card here so this yellow is gonna to upgrade to a three. This blue is gonna to upgrade to a six. This blue is gonna upgrade to a three. And then I'll get a yellow one to put out, a red one to put out here, and then a red one right here. So I actually created this really tight formation right in the middle of my orchard, which doesn't usually happen. That's kind of cool. So then we'll pull another card and now we're going to have some slightly more challenging decisions because we have all these doubles. I'm going to have to figure out what to do. So now let's choose what to do next. I don't have a monster play like I had last time. So what I might actually do is because I don't see double yellows as often, I might actually just put this here. So this is gonna to upgrade to a three, and then we'll put a one out because we had a one layer overlap right here. And then we'll draw another card and have a look at our options. So again, I have all these doubles here. 
if one comes up, I might just make an easy plate on here, but that's not what I have at the moment. So let's think about it. So one thing I can do if I want to, so I wanna go for what's gonna make me a lot of points. So I think what I might come over here and do is I'm gonna place this card right here over this blue, red, and yellow. So that way, I can upgrade this blue one to a six, which gives me more points. The red can become a three and I'll get a one over here on the yellow. And I have to be careful because I'm running out of yellow dice. So I have to maximize where I'm actually gonna get the yellow points. And then I draw another card. Hmm. What's the best thing to do? I think actually what might be really good is I might come here because see, I have yellow, red, yellow, blue, yellow, red, yellow, blue. So I can come here and then this dial upgrade to a three. This will upgrade to a three as well. I'll put my last yellow here, so I'm out. And then I can put the blue right here. All right, and then this is my last two cards. So I have to play these as well as I can to get as many points as possible. And then the game's already over. It's so quick. Orchard is over in a flash. So this may be one of my little keep it in my desk drawer, keep it in my backpack kind of lunch break games because it's charming and it's so fast. So since this is a sample game and also I think it might be worth it, I'm gonna show you guys how Rotten Fruit works first and play this. So see how I have yellow, yellow, red, blue, red. And this card is yellow, yellow, red, blue, blue. I still wanna play it because that's a lot of points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this card right up under here. Actually, let's just move the dice. The one thing that's a little bit inconvenient about the game is dealing with the dice. Okay, so we had this. And now we know that this blue is over a red, so I have to put a rotten fruit cube there because I've mismatched my fruit types. However, that's minus three and I'm getting a net increase in points because this goes to six, this goes to six, this goes to six, and this goes to three. So I got three, six, nine, 11 points off of the turn, minus three for still a net gain of eight, which I think was pretty good. And then let's figure out where this last card should go. At this point, I just wanna score a couple of points. Mm. So this card's not matching up with anything particularly amazingly. You know, it's it's not going to totally work over here. Um, I think probably the best thing to do is I think we can just stick it over here. So we'll do this yellow and blue like that, which will upgrade this yellow die to a three. And I can put out one more fruit die. So one thing I didn't do the best job of in this game, so I got a lot of high value dice, but I didn't maximize the dice I put out, which is strategically maybe not the best, but that is a complete game of Orchard. So let's go ahead and score it up. You basically count the pips and the dice minus three for the rotten fruit that I just used. So the way that I like to score, because it's a, you know, you don't want to like miscount, is I'm just, I just take them off. So three, four, seven, 10, 22, let's do 23, 24, that makes the sixes easier, so 30, 36, 42, and then we just, this these will cancel out. So my full score is 42, and let's see what that means. So in, this, in the rule book, there's this adorable little punny scoring system so let's have a look. All right, so we got a 42. That was a tremendous score. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But all of these little, how fruitful was your harvest scoring ranges are adorable. So if you get less than 25, it's paltry. Oh, uh, the next one is forget a pole, satisfactory, remark apple, tremendous, and plum believable. And then eventually, maybe one day, I'll get pretty perfect, take a bow. Um, I love dad jokes and puns, so this was totally up my alley. And that was a whole game of Orchard. I hope that you thought it was cute. If you were interested, it's going to drop on Kickstarter in late August. I'll put the date in the show notes. And I really love seeing all these cute little solo PNPs coming into print from Side Games. So definitely take a look and happy gaming. 